Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Welcome, everybody. This is Dr. Willie Jolly and my beautiful sidekick. This is Dee. And we're the authors of the book, Make Love. Make Make, money. Make it last. Ten secrets to shape a great marriage. How long have we been married? Uh, A long time. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have an idea how long? 45 years. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we've been together 45 years. 39. We 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 we're getting married thirty nine years. That's right. And so now you know that that sounds a little funny, but when we first got married, she she is hesitant because when we first, I couldn't. Remember. I said, "What's our anniversary?" Uh, I can't remember. I can't. She couldn't remember. She could never remember June the twenty eighth. That said, date had a bit of trauma. Because he went out to lunch and came back married. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was drama field, drama field, track. It that, was it was the best decision I ever made, but it uh, it was interesting. So day. so uh Terrence says if you're having a total eclipse of the heart, buy our book. Well, thank you, Terrence. For, Hi, Terrence. Terrence, hope you're well. I hope your mom is well. And then Linda and Greg Cozera. Uh, who travel all the time. And, they travel all the time. And so they are back home. And tonight I'm wearing uh, my shirt with a little, uh, can y'all see this? has a sun on it. It has a sun on it. And we got our glasses. Hey, how you like that? Yeah, I really can't see a thing. We can't see a thing, okay? can't see nothing. Nothing. So anyway, we had our uh, glasses for the eclipse, and we watched it. And good. All is well, Terrence says. Good. Okay, for those who are first time is new to this show, we want to welcome you. I'm Dr. Willie Jolly, and this is D. Taylor Jolly. We're the authors of this book. It's called Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. It's a book that took us a few years to write. Uh, first, we gave our best thinking on marriage, being uh, married at that point about 30 some years and hadn't had an argument in over th- uh, at that point, 28 or 29 years. And we wanted to share with people what, what, what the secrets we learned. Our son pushed us to it. We were hesitant, but we finally did. And so many people said it, it was it was a blessing to him. That's what we wanted to hear. It was a blessing. So I said, well, Let's just keep going. And then my son came back and said, y'all need to do a some sort of online program to, to answer people's uh, uh, you know, questions. And so we started this Monday night show. And we're thankful for all the people who say it has blessed them, helped them, encouraged them. Um, we are very grateful. And, and I think I mentioned last week the Lady, I met Jessica Faith, who is the weather woman, weekend weather woman at uh, yeah, Fox that, Fox? No. No. NBC4. NBC4. Lord, I'm me. sorry. All right. Uh, NBC4. And she's just fantastic. And we were texting this morning because she was trying to get me some glasses. Oh, and, and nice. finally, she's a sweetheart. She's a sweetheart. Anyway, we met her on Good Friday. At church. On Good Friday. And she said, Outside the women's bathroom, I was waiting for Dee, and she said, "Oh my God, it's Willie Jolly! Oh my God, it's Willie!" And her husband Ronaldo, and said, "Look, they pulled up their phone, and they had they had lists of comments from our book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last. They say it's something they keep close. It has changed their lives, changed their marriage." We said, "Well, that's why we wrote it." So uh, we hope that others have similar testimonies. Uh, we know that so many have have said that it's been a blessing to them. Please keep telling your friends to join us on Monday night. Uh, keep, if you can, uh, let people know to follow us and tell them to go to our Jolly Marriage website to see the TED Talk on how to never ever argue again in marriage. And then uh, be a blessing with somebody. Buy them books if they're struggling. Buy books. Okay, let's get to this topic. Eclipse of the Heart. Yeah, well, you got something to say about it? I'm here to get it. I mean, I'm telling them about how we can they, help they, them. They want to know about the well, eclipse of the heart. Well, we're going to talk about eclipse of the heart. 
So, as you know, the day was, uh, hey, Jerome Washington and others are joining. Uh, today was the day where has been anticipated for years that a an eclipse, a total eclipse would happen in America over 15 states, numerous major cities, Dallas and Austin and Indianapolis and so many others, Cleveland, were able to see a total eclipse of the sun. We were 87%. We were 87%, but we watched the 87% and it was wonderful. Now, as I was thinking about what we're going to talk about, because, you know, we get letters and we encourage everybody to send a letter if you got an issue, a concern, a situation, info at willyjolly.com, info at willyjolly.com. We're trying to address some of them. But what I said today, before we go to a letter, it's so profound. Why don't we do what we call news jack? We jack the news. We, we, we ride the, the, the coattails of something that's significant. And so we did. And a jacking is that the eclipse was important. It was a historic event. And so a total eclipse is where there's a blackout of the sun for a short time. So I said, you know, we get letters or have had letters over the years of people who were dead up in love. I mean, dead up in love. But then one day, somebody changed. It was a, an eclipse. They were, were gone. And physically or emotionally? Emotionally. And sometimes mm -hmm. they emotionally thoughts and then they, they physically. <laughs> so so with that in mind, we decided, I decided to encourage the staff to why don't we do something on the total eclipse of the heart? People who and lose their loving feeling. The song is the code of the eclipse of the heart. And it says there was a time when we were apart and then we had a total eclipse of the heart and the love is no more. And so it's, it's something to that effect. And so I think that this, is, this would be a great topic to talk about. So you did some research, I'm sure, because you always do research. Uh, let's see, Terrence. Um, there you go. Every now and then I get a, a go to the part, uh, Terrence, the last sector. Uh, every now and then I get a little bit lonely and you're never coming around. That's important, but it's the last part of the song that's the most important about the total eclipse of the heart and the fact that it's a total covering of the heart. So yeah, so. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely. That's right. That's a great song. So why don't you talk about what you, I know you took notes and have ideas. Cause I got my thoughts about what- Share what, your thoughts. Well, let God. me tell you, we'll and see. And then I will share mine. Okay, so when somebody loses a loving feeling, after they've been hot, dead up in love, I mean hot to try, but couldn't, couldn't do it, but one day they change. What happens? Well, I'll tell you what I, I, I find what happens. And it's right out of our chapter number one in our book, Friends First. Friends First, that it's critically important that you get married to someone who is your friend, that you really love being around them. You just dig them as a person. You enjoy the energy. People get married, as I say in the book, uh, let's see. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was light in my life, but now there's only love in the dark. Nothing I can say. A total eclipse of the heart. You got it, Terrence. Excellent. That's Thank it. You. Thank you, Terrence. Uh, uh, once upon a time, there was light in my life, but now there's only love in the dark. Nothing I can say. A total eclipse of the heart. So how did you get there? So how you get there? How you get there when there was love in your there? life and then it's dark is because you fell out of love. Now, what happens when, how do you fall out how of love? How do you fall out of love? Sorry. I'll tell you how you fall out of love. Stop communicating. The little stuff becomes big stuff. And you don't continue to build the relationship. And then you're not honest with each other. What do we get from people? Here are the reasons why they fall out of love. Somebody changed. Somebody let themselves go. 
We've had that a couple of times. Men and women. We had a woman say her husband. Remember the one we got recently? The husband had just kept eating. He has a disorder with food. You remember that? Oh, Zandic. Hello. I don't know if that's the answer. I don't know, but, but, but he, she was saying, I'm just talking about the, 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 mm -hmm. the letter, and say the husband has a food addiction. Mm -hmm. It gets heavier which, and heavier. Which is, is, and we know now, and Oprah has made that very popular most recently, that it really is an illness. The doctors have been saying for years. Okay, but that whatever the reason, whatever the reason it happened. He's no longer a, attractive. And we've heard of her. That's right. And so because he's obese. That's right. So uh you 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 got one, people stop talking. Two, they say something that hurts the other person's feelings and they don't resolve it. Mm. So yeah. the number one issue still is communication. Okay. Chapter number one, friends first, and chapter number four. So getting close to so I think it's easy to get close to somebody when when it's new, it's exciting, you're discovering, you're trying to find out all about them. But once you kind of you you under, you think you understand them, there's a complacency that sets in. Okay, let me how do you prevent let that? me let me read from the book. It is not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that makes unhappy marriages. Frederick Nietzsche. It's hard to have a long lasting loving marriage with someone you don't really like. We're in a time of social media where you connect with people online who are called friends, but you don't know them. Facebook friends, internet friends. Yet when we speak of a friend in this book, we are talking about someone that is a friend, not a social media friend. We believe a friend or a person you know well, who knows you well, the two of you have mutual affection and trust. They stand by you in good times and in bad times, happy times, sad times. A true friend will stand with you, stand by you, and stand up for you. That is someone who can depend on and have your back. So really, how do you become that true friend? How do you become that true friend? You got to communicate. And that's got to be, see, we say in the book, people marry for all sorts of reasons. Because somebody looked good, somebody had a lot of money, somebody was powerful, somebody had it going on with their body. All right, but now you're stuck. Now you're stuck. You're, you're stuck. Yeah. And I'm saying, so what do you do? So we say, okay, you got to communicate. What does that mean yeah. in a plain, everyday fashion that somebody can use? Everybody's in a hurry. Quick, fast, and everything. I'm having challenges. You're telling me to communicate. I don't even like being around them. What, what do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, 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 but how did you get to be not like I'm being around them? You didn't start that way. Okay. Because they're obnoxious. Okay, so they're obnoxious. They're okay. obnoxious. All right, but you didn't they start They know that. everything. All right, but let me say, here's the thing. It didn't start that way. You were all up in love. I mean, I, I've seen the people. Because, because we didn't know each other. That's why we were in love. We look good. Okay, so these are the reasons why people... And, and you said the right things. You're, you're dating. Uh, now we're not dating. So you got to keep the dating going. We, we don't have special time for each other. Date night. You're leaving the dishes in the sink. Got to communicate about this chores. You made the microwave stink because you left bacon <laughs> juice. <laughs> oh, I'm walking up somebody's alley. <laughs> Kind of inside joke today. <laughs> she came upstairs. <laughs> oh, you said I smell bacon. <laughs> I said I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm a cheating vegan. She's a vegan. She's and a so vegan. Like, oh, what is that? What is that smell? Uh -huh. And you know he's lying. Uh -huh. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. I had no. She said, "Let me smell your breath." <laughs> So look, uh, uh, Brenda says, we ignore stuff because we're in love at first. The red flags are flying, but we ignore it. That's true. Uh, we we are so, we want it to well, we're so enamored. We're so uh, infatuated. We're so lustful that 
You mean you want to get laid? Woo! That's what you're thinking about. Woo! Look at that. Woo! I've been there. Everything else is second. Everything. It's everything. All right. And so like the time now. you told me, you said, what did you talk about with a girl you used to? I said, talk? We ain't never talk. I don't know what she was talking I couldn't know if she could put two words together. I would talk. I don't know what she was. Yeah, she was looking good. So we had that conversation. We had an open and honest conversation. So all of the things that break up marriages are fixable if you identify them and address them. And both parties want to work on their relationship. Yes. Well, usually they do at the beginning. If you can keep that beginning, or well, you just said it, they stop being romantic, they stop courting, mm -hmm. they stop flirting with each other, they stop telling each other they love each other, they stop being romantic. The intimacy, not the sex. No, not the sex. Just but the intimacy, the intimacy and, and an emotional intimacy is sharing yourself. Mm -hmm. Not physically, but what you're thinking. Right. You know, what... What your concerns are, what you want for your future, and that perhaps you're looking for someone who will buy in and help you make that future become reality. Is that kind of thing? Well, I think I think that's important. But also now, what makes people fall out of love? The, the, how do you get to no communication? Because there's something where people are not. Uh, uh -huh. This is a big one. Okay. When they're not valued and listened to, they're not listened to. They're they're devalued and they're disregarded. Their thoughts. Your thoughts don't mean nothing. You know. Your ideas don't mean. But nothing. I'm saying, how do you even get there? I think my thought is, with the busyness of life, we start to pass each other by. Yeah. When when we no longer choose to date which we believe is really crucial, crucial crucial, because it gives you a chance to see and be inquisitive about what's going on in the life of your mate because you don't know. During COVID, it was overwhelming because now, you know, you're stuck, you're face to face. You might know more than you had even anticipated. And there were lots of complaints and, and need for counseling because it really partners really didn't understand. Right. But the need for dating gives you a chance just to be around each other and learn to like and respect each other. Become friends. To become friends. And we have a chapter and a piece in the book about befriending being how do you do how do you befriend the person you're So you have to slow down and pay attention. Mm. To to your mate, you have to slow down, mm. and that's a very conscious thing that you have to do. Now, how do you do that? That that's that gets into that that mindfulness. Oh, what am I? I'm running from here here, and some people like being busy. Some people like running, help, scale, just just everywhere, right? And you have to stop. Why am I doing this? How, is this helping me achieve the, uh, the goal? Then maybe the goal is, okay, now I got married, I got, I got the maid, I got the child, boom, now I'm going to something else. But now you've got these different plates. And what you talk about when you talk about your speaking and having to do all these different things, you have to get the plate to spin. But then you got to keep coming back and touching, that and touching the plate and make sure that the plate is still spinning. Right. Right. So that's like a relationship. Yeah. So, okay, I wanted to get married. Wanted to have the family, all that started, and now I'm going to focus on the career over here, and I can't, but you can't forget. So, yeah. so here's the, here's, I don't want them to assume that they know what I'm talking about or what you're talking about. One of the analogies I talk to people about, they often ask me, well, how is it that you're a best-selling author, you're a Hall of Fame speaker, you're a syndicated radio program host on Sirius XM and on Radio One, you've got uh, your books, you've got your uh, merchandise. You've got all of these activities. How do you do them all? And I tell them. He's ADD. Yeah, but how do you do them all besides the ADD. ADD? And how do you do them all? And I say, when, years ago, I went to the circus and I watched all of the activities going on. And, and then they 
they had this one moment where there was a person being shot out of a cannon. And I looked over there to see the person and the elephants. And, and when I came back to the center ring, there was a man with five or six or seven poles with seven plates on it. And everybody was, wow, he got those seven plates going on those seven sticks all going at the same time. Wow. Now, I was wild by it. But the next time I went to the circus and they did a distraction with the man getting shot out of the cannon, I didn't watch that. I kept my eye on the guy with the plates. And I noticed when they were, everybody else was looking over there, he took one stick and one plate and he got it going real good, real good. Then he went to a second stick and a second plate. And all he had to do then was to tap that first one every now and then. And then he did the same for the third. Got that going, tap the second, tap the first, get him going. And all the way through the seven. He didn't do them all at the same time. He didn't try and do that. So it was little by little you add on, but you keep your eye also on the ones that have already been started. That's what Dee's saying about you, you set a goal, you wanted to get married. You set a goal, you wanted to have a family. Set a goal, you wanted to get a picket a white house or a picket fence. Uh, but then you wanted to set a new goal. But you gotta make sure you keep your eye on those other goals. The family. Because I tell people, I told a, a, a speaker just the other day that you can be busy. And I've got a couple of speakers who I've told this to, and they didn't listen. But uh, people in business, I told this to. In life, you're juggling a lot of balls. Oh, you're juggling a lot of balls. You've got business and community and your church activities and your your fraternity, your sorority. You got you got all sorts of balls you are juggling. And they all are good. But one is fragile. It's crystal glass. Oh, no. What is a glass ball and the rest of them are like? Well, what is glass? I'm getting there. It's Tiffany. It's crystal. What's the, what's the famous glass? It's, 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 it's uh, well, it's, it's said, Tiffany. Tiffany, okay. And others are all rubber. If you drop them, they'll bounce. Business, he'll bounce back. We've been, we've had bounce backs, but you got to keep your eye on that family ball. Critical. Because once that drops, it shatters. And that is why it is critical. And uh, Terrence said, I got my own, your 401k, your CD, saving and budget, keep Terrence them balanced. Is, Terrence is right up my alley. He is <laughs> talking my language. Absolutely. All right. So the song, Total Eclipse of the Heart. Mm -hmm. We go back to the fact that it was light, then it was dark, and it was a total eclipse of the heart. It was going good, but then you took your eye off, something distracted you. And thought of going bad. Okay, so I have some tips. thoughts and right. some tips, and then you can chime in. All right. So there is a PhD by the name of, of, of Aaron um, Leonard who wrote the book Loving Well. He's a psychotherapist. Okay. Okay, as well as an author. So some of his thoughts were right in line with ours. It said, talk to your mate. So what talk. was the first thing we said? I said, communicate. All right. So and that might be hard, especially because you're passing each other because everybody's so busy. So you have to stop and think something's wrong here and you have to make time mm -hmm. to stop and talk. Right. Maybe it's in the bathroom. Yeah, you gotta talk, talk in the bathroom while you while he's brushing his teeth or you on or somebody else is on the toilet. Ooh, but that happens. <laughs> you know what? You're gonna get it in when you can. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Number okay. two. Uh, date your mate, we which is what we talk about all the time. And the dating of the mate does not require money. It requires time. Intentional time. Int intentional, I like that. Intentional time. Intentional. Is that 30 minutes once a week? An, an hour? hour? Put it in your schedule. For hours Anything of 30 that tonight. is important, you schedule it. Okay. Right. Consider and talk about what has changed. Mm. What's different now? You know, you used to come home and, and, and we talk about what our days were like. Now we're both at home because we're working here together. And um, we have children in schools who go to two different schools. We were talking about that the other day when wherever we were driving to. And I was like, I used to drive this route 
twice a day, five days a week. It was like 45, 45 minutes. minutes one way. Yeah. Taking the children to two different Christian schools. Yep. Yep. But I like the second part of that. Consider what has changed and then take a step back to go forward. Oh, I like that. Take a step back and think back. What what changed? What was good? What what did we do before? What what drew us to each other? Step back. So, so maybe circumstances change. Communication change. No time. Because circumstances change. Uh, uh, the hectic nature. So maybe there's time when you're driving the kids to school. If you're doing it together because you have one car. Remember we just have we one, have one car. car. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. get to talk. You have forced communication because you're in the same space together. But now everybody's going a different route. You've got different cars, and so you're on a different schedule. Yep, yep. So you have to consciously find some time to talk. So remember, think back on those next. Think back on those things that brought you together. What did you guys laugh about? Right. We do that a lot. We do that a lot. My son used to come when he was living here. He used to come in the room and say, what are y'all laughing at at midnight at night? We're sitting in bed giggling to each other, just laughing at one, one thing and another. Oh, oh yeah. Some, something about the silly things that, that we have done and do do, and you're just, you say that I'm hilarious, and I say I'm not. <laughs> you are hilarious. <laughs> Nobody knows it but me and the inner circle. They think you're a funny one. A, a, a stick in the mud? A, what? No, just a funny daddy. Just a... Uh, it's a funny daddy if it's not a stick in the mud. No, not a stick in the mud. Stick in the mud is trying to stop, bro. It's just a funny daddy. I'm tight, you know. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> so remember the things that you loved about them. Yeah. And then you support your spouse or your partner's uh, dreams and goals. Now, how do you do that? Then maybe when I say, that's an outrageous idea. That's stupid. You don't say that. Oh. No. Yeah. Well, okay. So that's what we're going to do. Mm. Okay. Mm. You thought about that? Oh, okay. Let's. Let's just get a plan that, and talk through it. There mm -hmm. you go. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, you Rick don't say, say you are funny. She said you are funny. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, if, and if it doesn't work, you don't say I told you so. Oh, let's move on to the let's next thing. Y'all got to see the TED you don't talk. Be, you don't be that. great no. your mate because it didn't work. No. Don't let you be the reason why the plan did not work. Amen. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. And build a culture of respect and appreciation. Here's my thought. You know, when I was doing, I did a seminar, a, a, a women's retreat, and the lady who was pregnant said, my husband, she said something like, my husband is, is an idiot and stupid, something very demeaning about her baby. And I was like, but you married him. So what does that make you? So we want to be That's careful. Very good. Oh, oh, oh. You know how she just said that? She said, now she just kind of blew off and blew it by. Uh, look, uh, oh, but here's how she said it. Your husband's stupid, huh? Well, what does that make you, Miss Pregnant Woman? You know, just, just call it like you see it. So. So. Appreciation and respect. We do that all the time. First of all, we appreciate each other and we respect each other. And we're always trying to show who, who loves who more. And by the way, make it clear, I love her more. I love her more. I, I chased her. I, I courted her. She told me no over a year. But I kept you know her what? There's, re there's research that, that says, oh, I am, I am reading for the umpteenth time thinking we're rich. Yes. And, and one of the things that thinking we're rich it says, the sale starts after you get the no. That's right. The sale starts after you get the no. You can't give up. So it's that persistence. Yep. And the, the persistence. Uh, the Terrence says that you, you with this cheating vegan is hilarious. <laughs> she doesn't cheat. She won't eat a piece of my chicken. She won't eat a piece of my turkey. Terrence, you don't, you don't understand. I said, here's some chicken. No, some, some, some of the stuff he eats. Here's a piece of turkey. Definitely not going to eat a hot dog. Some, some things you don't know what it is. Dog. It's so cooked. You, you don't know what it is. You don't know what it was. You don't know if it was moving, if it was swimming, if it was walking around in the yard. You don't know. <laughs> is, that your, is that what you meant? That's, yes, sir. That's, <laughs> all right. That's so, my tail and I'm sticking to So it. I'm going back to 
uh, Terrence says he gave us those lyrics. I love them. Thank you. Once upon a time, there was light in my life. Mm -hmm. But now there's only love in the dark. Nothing I can say. A total eclipse of the heart. So we just gave you some suggestions. Hey, folks, life. don't have to have a total. You don't have to let your marriage go down. When you feel it going south, stop, talk. I love this quote. I really do love this quote. Uh, remember uh, about going back. Consider what has changed and take a step back to go forward. Oh, that's good. That's good. Take a step back to go forward. Use this, folks, because because relationships go up and down. Here's what I want to close with. We tell people emotions change. Marriage is not, well, first of all, love is a decision. Uh, oh, no. Love is an emotion. Marriage is a decision. Love is an emotion. Marriage is a decision. You decide to stay married because emotions change. They do. They do. So I'm encouraging And why you. do they change? And you're going you're gonna to say, Nadine, let's not go down that rabbit hole as to why, right? Why what? Emotions change. Well, what do you think? It depends upon what's going on in that person's life at the time. It might not be directly related to the spouse, but it just kind of spills over. That could be possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be a lot of reasons why why people emotion change. Oh, they just wake up one day and they got they get moody. Who knows? Mm -hmm. what? Okay, whatever no, it is, that's a choice too. Well, whatever it is, whatever the reason, you decide to stay married. It's a decision, and so I decide. Married people stay live longer. Yes, they do, and they're, uh, and they're I, happier. I, yes, I was going to say happily married people. Live happily longer. married people live longer. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. So our time is up. I hope y'all enjoyed today's show. We want you to go to jollymarriage.com, get two copies of the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last. Watch the TED Talk, get the bundle. And if you got a problem, get the Marriage Repair Series. It's five parts. We talk about one segment is about communication, one about money, another about sex, another about family matters, and then blended families. Brenda, thank you. She said a great show. Uh, Kitty Chaney said the vegan diet is beautiful, particularly on her. She's really beautiful, and she looks good. We're saying positive stuff she does because we're good. getting ready to go to bed, so to put everything in the best light. I'm aware. <laughs> uh, she's beautiful. She's so beautiful. <laughs> so Thank y'all for, for being part of our community. We love you guys. Keep telling people. Tell them to, to keep buying the book. We want to sell millions of copies of the book. Because we want to enhance a million marriages, save a million marriages, and enrich a million marriages. So jollymarriage.com. Go get it and get two copies if you're in a couple. Have a great week. We're going to go out and say, oh, 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 my one-man show. I'm going out sitting right say, well, we're going out on a on a song for my one man show close to you. We're going to do it again one night only, September, April 27th. April 27th. Last Saturday. Last, last, last uh -huh. Saturday in this month in DC at Emory Fellowship. That is going to be a great night of inspiration, entertainment, education, motivation. Go to thecomebackshow.com. Thecomebackshow.com to get your tickets. Keep the faith. Keep your lights lit, your, sun sh your, your sunshine shining, and remember that your best is yet to come. Good night, Terrence. Good night, uh, Good, Cazales. night. Good night, uh, Brenda. Thank Good night, all the folks who have joined us. Karen, Dave, Denise Smith, uh, Brenda Colson, uh, all the folks who have joined us. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome Washington. Hey, we're going out. Here we go. Oh, and right, now, hold on. There's somebody else. Land of Pack, I believe, was over there. Okay, we're going out with our music. Here we go. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.